This is Mitch Steven with TaxFeeFuture.com. I'm here with Tim Berry, and we're going to be talking about the differences between 401ks and IRAs. There's a lot of differences. I don't think we'll be able to cover every single iota of difference, but we're going to point out some of the major ones. So, Tim, where do we start when we're talking about the differences between an IRA and a 401k? Maybe we're trying to make this decision. Which one do I want to invest in? Which one do I want to open? Well, it's a no-brainer of a decision. In fact, it's not even really a decision. If you qualify for a 401k, use the 401k. It's, there's no question about it whatsoever. 401ks are 58,000 times better than IRAs. And what are some of those betters? What are some of the improvements of the 401k over the IRA? Uh, number one, with an IRA, you have to have a custodian. They have to watch over your shoulder. They have to approve, disapprove, do whatever. And they have to rat you out to the IRS if they think that you did something wrong, even if you may not have done something wrong. With a 401k, you're your own trustee. You don't need a custodian. Uh, you're not going to rat yourself out to the IRS if you think you did something wrong. So right off the top, the 401ks don't need a custodian. You don't need to beg and plead with them to use your own money. That's a massive benefit of the 401k. Other super big benefit of the 401k is with an IRA, and we've talked about this in some previous uh, shows, with an IRA, if it borrows money and makes a profit with the borrowed money, it has to pay taxes. Even inside of a Roth IRA, it has to pay taxes on the profits of that borrowed money. With a 401k, in most situations, if your 401k borrows money to purchase real estate and it makes profits with the real estate, it doesn't have to pay any taxes. So that's a massive benefit. Uh, contribution limits, contribution limits for a 401k. 58,000 or so, maybe even the 60,000s if you're over 50 years old. Uh, with an IRA, it's a whopping 6,000 bucks. So there's just a whole multitude of reasons to use a 401k over an IRA. And if you have the opportunity to use a 401k, don't even think about it. Don't even ask for the differences. Just do it. Yeah. So um, I think in my case, I, my, my wife and I both own the 401k or we're both owners of the business. So I could contribute like 58,000 and my wife could contribute like 58,000. So it was a whopping uh, hundred and whatever thousand dollars, you know, that um, um, I never thought I would, I, I always thought, why in the world would you want a traditional uh, retirement plan when you could have a Rothenized uh, version, you know, but then you learn later after you get up into certain income groups that having being able to put money into a traditional vein of, of, of your 401k gives you a much bigger tax deduction to help you out that year if you need some help. So um, there's there's a plan for both Rothenized streams of, of, of growth and for traditional streams of growth. Um, I also like the fact, and I think you can confirm, uh, 401ks are a lot less litigious or the, or, or, or the penalties if you mess up in a 401k are a much smaller, maybe a slap on the hand compared to an IRA where you could, you could um, have a huge taxable event because you made a little mistake. Oh, you hit it right on the head. And I think that was one of our previous episodes too, is I talked about the guy who had uh, a, a boo-boo with a $700,000 account. If that would have been an IRA, he probably would have been looking at taxes of over 350,000, probably taxes of about $400,000 out of his 700,000. So he would have lost over half of his account. With the 401k, it was a boo-boo, 1,000, 2,000 bucks penalty. It was a whole lot of nothing. So yeah, 401ks are a great safety net as opposed to the IRA as well. So in the 401ks, I also love the fact that I can um, purchase an LLC and open up a bank account in my in my 401k and get checkbook control, which means I don't have to deal with the trustee to get their permission to buy something or to loan. As long as I feel like it's a, not a prohibitive transaction, which that's what I have you for. I call up and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing X, Y, and Z. Do you see any problems? You go, no. I say, okay, I get out my checkbook. I consummate that loan. I consummate that purchase. I do whatever I want to do, like right now, like right like that. So having Absolutely. checkbook control 
is a super advantage for a 401k, I think. What do you think? Oh, well, I totally think so. I mean, it's like what you were talking about, Mitch. You don't have to fill out forms. You don't have to submit them to the custodian. You don't have to talk to somebody who didn't graduate from high school working now at the custodian's questioning you about what you're doing. Nah, you don't need that crap. Uh, you're your own trustee. You make the investment. You don't worry about it. Yeah, I call Tim Barry. I say, this is what I'm thinking about doing. You see any problems? He'll say yes or no. If he says yes, then he tells me how to correct my problem or what, you know, maybe there's a way to do it that I just haven't figured out. And then I get my checkbook out and I do it. Let me tell you when you're going to find out how important checkbook control is. That when, when you lose a deal that could make you 50, 60, $70,000 because the trustee that you're waiting on took too much time or said no or otherwise just messed up the timing because, you know, as a real estate investor, and it's probably this way with all kinds of businesses, time is money. You get that great deal on that 1950 Corvette or that, you know, half a million dollar house that you can get for $200,000 because of there's time pressures. You have to move lightning fast. You know, that's usually one of the main components of why someone's giving you a deal on something is because they need some money right friggin' now, now, you know, and waiting around for a trustee or waiting around for a custodian to, 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 to um, bless your deal. You know, you only got to lose one of those deals and you'll say, I'm never doing this again. I'm, I'm rolling everything over. I'm rolling my IRAs over. I'm doing a, a non-taxable event, roll it over. I'm going to open up a 401k if you qualify for a 401k, okay? So maybe we'll talk about that in the next episode. What does it take to qualify for a 401k? All right, Tim, uh, there's many, many, many differences between the 401k and the IRA. We've just touched on a few. That's why we have Tim in our corner. Uh, If you're contemplating uh, one or the other, get with Tim, get with taxfreefuture.com, set an appointment and, and find out what's best for you. That's the whole point. What's best for you? All right, my friend, I'm out of here. Anything else to add before we go, Tim? I think that pretty much covers it, Mitch. Thank you much. Appreciate it. All right.